Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to our last Future Fight Vanguard video for EB14. So EB14, the next stage set, this is our last deck that we are covering, which is going to be the Asha deck. So this is actually, I gave every single deck um, in the Future Fights for this set a title. So Gear Chronicle is the coolest deck to play. Altmal is the most competitive deck to play, and Asha is my favorite deck to play. I think it is the most fun. Um, I blitz people. I like to tell people, you know, Naruto, if you're familiar with Naruto and you're familiar with the character Neji Hyuga, I like to tell people you're in range because Asha has like pretty much a range where if you're at, you're pretty much within kill range from very early in the game with this Asha deck. So um, my build of Asha is a Blitz Asha deck. So I really hope you guys enjoy the build and the video with me. It was a lot of fun to make the video, especially with a lot of you guys knowing that I main Neo Nectar and I've main Neo Nectar since like forever. Like I top Neo Nectar, I top tournaments with Neo Nectar when like no one's playing Neo Nectar. So this will probably be one of the key decks that I build um, just to have a little nostalgia. I don't think that it's by far the best deck at all that's out right now, but I think that it definitely can hold its own um, with some of the top decks by way of blitzing and cheesing your opponent. So let's get right into the video. If you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe down below. Click the bell button so you don't have to miss a single video from us going forward. Also, be sure to like the video if you like it. Share the video if you love it. And comment down below letting me know your thoughts on the build and your thoughts on the deck. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you want it to go away? Did you get cheesed by an Asha player? Are you salty? Did you get hit with the 8 trigrams, 64 palms? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, be sure to check out our social medias down below, which include Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch, which is going to be the new combined Twitch for both my platforms, which is LPA Empire. So definitely go check that out in the description down below. I'll be streaming on uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you guys want to come through uh, for us playing different games, I'm going to be streaming card fight stuff on there. I'm going to be streaming anime stuff on there. I'm going to be streaming video game stuff on there so definitely come through come through so that we can play some video games together also be sure to check out the join button if you're interested in channel memberships which include access to our private discord um tutoring deck requests and all that crazy stuff on um, video requests all that stuff um so thank you guys to the ones of you who are already channel memberships so little shout out to you guys already because i know there are a few of you um but yeah just definitely be sure to check that out if you aren't a member and also, last but not least, if you guys are interested in anime, animation, or video games, be sure to check out my second channel, Let's Plays Animes, down in the description below. But with all that out of the way, let's get right into my favorite deck of the next stage. Miss Asha herself. Like, look at her. Like, look at her. She looks so good. She looks like she's saying to you, you're in range. You know what I'm saying? So, let's get um, right into the Asha deck. So, Asha is... Um, like I said before, it's like a blitz deck. Um, some would even call it a cheese deck because you can kill your opponents from very, very, very early if your opponent does not have like the god hand of defense to be able to block you. So I have one of my games, like the games for that I played for um, these Asha games were also really entertaining. So be sure to watch the games portion of this video um, so that you guys can be just as entertained as I was playing them because uh, they were honestly some really entertaining games. But let's get right into the deck build. Um, so we're starting off with our grade three. We have four Dream Spinning Ranunculus Asha. So just like Dream Spinning Ranunculus Asha used to be a stride, Aero Divine Knight Altmall used to be a stride, and Chrono Dragon uh, Next Stage used to be a stride. This is a new card that is just turned into a grade three instead of a grade four. In Next Stage's case, it's still a grade four, but that's because of Gear Chronicles mechanic. So Aero Divine Knight Altmall and Dream Spinning Asha are actually grade threes now. So they are um, in turn our main cards that we want to be on the in the deck because they're more powerful versions of their counterparts. Which Dream Spinning Asha's um, counterpart is Ranunculus Flower made in Asha, and then for Aero Divine Knight Altmall, you guys obviously know that it's Blue Sky Knight Altmall. So, um, Dream Spinning Ranunculus Asha's skill, it has two Vanguard abilities. The first one is a continuous Vanguard ability that says, during your turn, if you have two or more units with Asha and its card names, this unit gets plus 10,000 power. And if you have three or more cards with Asha and its card name, this unit gets plus one critical. 
Um, so there's a reason why it's important that it's giving, you know, usually you would look at this card in a nutshell and you would be like, okay, it gives the Vanguard plus 10k and a crit. Like a lot of cards already do that and they do it better. Well, um, Asha actually gets a new mechanic in this deck, which is actually like furthering on the mechanic of Neo Nectar's token abilities. So um, we actually get a new ability in this deck to call forth an Asha Flower Fairy token. And that is basically a new type of token. I will show it to you guys here. So I'll pull out this dream spinning ridiculous Asha will create a token. And so this card right here um, is what your Asha's Flower Fairy token will look like. So the Asha's Flower Fairy token has two um, rear guard abilities. The first one is continuous on rear guard circle. This unit has the same card name as your Vanguard with Asha in its card name. So that's where you're getting the abilities that synchronize with, you know, saying if you have two or more units with Asha in its card name or three or more units with Asha in its card name, that um, can stack onto that when you have Asha's Flower Fairy tokens out. Um, also, its other rear guard ability, which is the most important part of it, um, is when it attacks, you choose one of your vanguards with Asha in its card name, and you increase or decrease this unit's power and critical to match that unit until the end of this battle. So basically what that means is that you want to stack all this power and all this critical um, on your vanguard and make your vanguard as swole and buff as possible. That way when your vanguard attacks and then these attack later, you can even put trigger effects on this, and that makes two to passes in this deck extremely dangerous because your opponent will two to pass you and you'll just all vanguard anyways knowing that when your rear guard attacks it will just become exactly what your vanguard was so very very important to note and then that also leads into our second skill of dream spinning ridiculous asha which is the creation of the asha flower fairy token so uh during your main phase on vanguard circle once per turn you can soul blast one and retire two rear guards and then you can call an asha flower fairy token to rear guard circle so very 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 important Moving on to our next grade three, our backup grade three in the deck, we have four Ranunculus Flower made in Asha. This is the regular Asha that came out in the trial deck. So obviously it's going to be worse than the Asha that comes out in the main set. Um, but let's go over its two abilities. The first one is when placed on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, you can counterblast one, call up to two plant tokens to Rearguard Circle, and this unit gets plus 10,000 power until the end of the turn. So I think that this card is amazing on Rearguard Circle. On Vanguard Circle, it's like eh. But like on rear guard circle, this ability is very, 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 very good. Like if you're on dream spinning um, and you use this card on rear guard circle, it sets up for so many plays. Like you know, sets up for your Antero plays, um, and it fills your board really, really fast without you having to commit. And its second ability, let's get into its second ability. So its second ability is activation skill on Vanguard once per turn. Retire three rear guards and call an Asha Flyer Fairy token. So obviously, you guys can see here that for this Asha, you have to retire three. While this Asha, you have to retire two and a Soul Blast. So you definitely want to prefer to be on Dream Spinning because it is a lot easier to make those Asha Flyer Fairy tokens for yourself. Moving on to our grade twos. Like I said, this build is going to be very different from a lot of Neo Nectar builds you'll see because this is a blitz build. Like we try to blitz our opponent fast as possible. And we just try to kill them dead. Like we're not trying to live. We're not trying to gain advantage. We're trying to kill them dead. <laughs> but yeah, let's get right into the grade twos. So the grade twos starting off for Blossoming Maiden Sela. Uh, so what Sela does is it has two abilities. The first one is a continuous rear guard ability that says if you have a unit with the same card name as your Vanguard on your rear guard, this unit cannot be retired by card effects and it gets plus 5,000 power. So this is a very useful skill when you're rushing on grade two. And let's say you have two Selas or more. Um, it's very, very good rush uh, to perform with these. Also, if you're fighting something like Kagero, Kagero cannot touch them with abilities. They have to attack into them. And then these cards are 15k even on your opponent's turn. So very, very, very important um, to mention there. Uh, also, uh, its secondary ability is Counterblast 1 on Vanguard Rearguard Circle. And then call up to two plant tokens to Rearguard Circle. Um, and then when you call the plant tokens, obviously they're just the 5k regular plant tokens now this really helps with boosting um getting that rush off really really early and getting what you need to get done
Moving on to our next grade two, we have four genuine maiden Farine. So uh, I don't see a lot of people, if ever, running Farine, and I think that they should because Farine's a pretty solid card, actually. So Farine, when placed on rearguard circle, if your vanguard is grade three or greater, she can call up to one plant token for free, and then one of your vanguards gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. So again, another card that adds power to our vanguard and gives us a free plus one in the form of a token. So very, very important because it can uh, reset your board if your board gets cleared by, you know, things like new blade master or anything like that. Like it helps you build up your board and you want cards that give you free advantage because creating the Asha Flower Fairy Token sometimes against control are very, very hard, especially when they can get rid of the Asha Flower Fairy Token every single turn. Um, it becomes really, really hard and you have to blow resources to keep creating them. So you really want cards like this that, you know, if you call this card from your hand, for example, it gives you itself and the token um, so you already have the conditions to create an Asha Flyer Fairy Token with Dream Spinning. And then on top of that, it gives Dream Spinning f plus 5k. So I absolutely think that this card is amazing and comes clutch against a lot of control matchups. Moving on to our last grade two in the deck, we have four Rindo, Gitane, Musketeer, and Tarot. I think Antero is one of my favorite cards in the deck, and the reason why we can blitz as hard as we do, because if we have multiple Anteros in our hand, it just gets real nasty for our opponent real fast. So this is the 5k grade two, but we don't attack with it, so we don't care. Um, it's regard skill is when placed. One of your Vanguards gets plus 5,000 power into the end of the turn for each of your token units that are currently present. So if you have four token units on the board and you play this card as your fifth rear guard, your Vanguard will get plus 20k. So like I said, very, very important to be stacking all that power and critical on your Vanguard with the Asha's Fire Fairy token on the side so that you can just go ham and it's really hard for your opponent to block. Um, moving on to our grade ones, we have four Valkyrie of Reclamation Padmini. So what Padmini does is it has a Vanguard and Rearguard ability. First one is uh, Vanguard Rearguard during your turn. If you have two or more token units, this unit gets plus 5,000 power. So a lot of your grade ones and twos are really just for rushing in the early game. Um, except, except for a few, just like, you know, Antero um, and Farine that we just talked about. You definitely want to hold those. But every other card in this grade one and grade two lineup is pretty much just used in the early game. Because in the late game, you'll only have Ashes that you're attacking with. And then since the, um, something that I forgot to mention is... The Asha's Flyer Fairy Token cannot actually be boosted effectively. Because basically its skill will override the boost... Um, and it will change it back to the power that your Vanguard is anyway. So they can be boosted, but it won't like work. Like it won't add any power to the Asha's Flyer Fairy Token. So definitely be aware of that. So the circles that are behind your Asha's Flyer Fairy Token, like let's say that you have two Asha's Flyer Fairy Token, which is your ideal. Both these rear guard circles on the um, bottom left and the bottom right will be completely useless as far as boosting. So that's where I play like, you know, Anteros or stuff like that. Um, or just, you know, grade twos in that slot just to make it like, you know, just, I'm not using that rearguard circle anyways, so it's good to be able to use those circles um, and play over them and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, so Padmini is really good for rushing um, with its first ability. It comes with 13k if you have two or more tokens, so you can create tokens in the early game pretty easily. Um, this card is actually instantly fulfilled by Sela, so if you ride Sela and then you have a Padmini, boom, there you go, 18k column with a, with a token. Um, and then its second ability is Vanguard Rearguard when placed from hand. Look at the top five cards of your deck. Reveal up to one grade three card from among them. Put into your hand and shuffle your deck. And if you put a card into your hand, discard a card. So our regular generic check top five for a grade three um, type thing. Discard a quick shield um, if you have it. And then choose very carefully what you want to discard otherwise. Because you, do, you don't want to discard a key blitzing piece. Um, so I usually just discard a trigger or something like that if we have it. Moving on, we have four Budding Maiden, Diane. Diane is another card that helps us blitz because it gives power to the Vanguard. So its Vanguard Rearguard skill is when placed on Vanguard or Rearguard, um, discard a card from your hand, draw a card, and then one of your grade three Vanguards gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. So if you have multiple Dianes in your hand, really helps you filter on the grade three turns, but also really helps you build that power up for the blitz. Um, then we have four uh, Maiden of Sweetberry. Uh, which is one of our last grade ones in the deck. So this grade one, what it does is when Vanguard Rearguard when placed, um, call up to one plant token of Rearguard Circle. And if you have a grade three or greater Vanguard, Soul Charge one. So we don't actually run this card for its ability to create a token, even though that is a good ability. We mainly run it for the Soul Charge, believe it or not, because like when you get later in the game, it'll be really hard, especially if you go Force 2, which I usually go Force 2 in this build. Um, it'll be really hard to get more soul 
into your deck to be, keep using dream spinning skill to create more um asha flyer fairy tokens because chances are your opponent are either destroying them or you're gonna have to create more anyways because your opponent's at attacking into them or whatever and you won't you weren't able to guard so after like two turns of doing this like your soul's gonna be empty so you really need to consider um at some point playing a maiden of sweet berries so that you can soul charge one and usually by the the third grade three turn you're either dead or your opponent's either super dead um so it's like asha is a deck that plays very closely to the fence which i like to say like it's very close combat oriented which means that it gets in your face fast and if it can't win then it loses <laughs> basically so you want to do as much damage as you can as fast as possible because the later the game goes for you the worse it is for you actually um as the asha player so um the secondary regard ability of maiden of sweetberry is on regard uh, circle during your turn if you have a grade through a greater vanguard this unit gets plus 5,000 power so can become a 13k attacker or a 13k booster um as well so not bad it would be better if we could actually boost asha flyer fairy tokens but we can't so it is what it is for right now <laughs> our last grade one of the grade one lineup is one maiden of blue lace so maiden of blue lace we really never use it but if we come across it it can be useful in certain scenarios so it has an activation rear guard ability that says once per turn soul blast one and then call up to one plant token to rear guard circle and this unit gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn so it itself can become a 13k attacker or booster but it can also call a token so you can make an 18k column by itself and you can do that in the very early game if you have this card in the early game as well um, and 18k is a very pol powerful column against grade ones and grade two turns so very good then for our starter we run one spring heralding maiden ozu it's the starter that has to be run with asha like come on it's 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 the og it's the og asha starter we gotta run it so um what ozu does is the same thing as every other starter in standard when wrote upon draw a card and if our opponent's vanguard is grade one or greater put a quick shield ticket into our hand which is often used with discarding effects like padmini stuff like that so there's not really anything else that discards except for diane so you could use it for diane as well if you happen to ride diane but either way if you ride padmini or you ride diane you can just get rid of the quick shield ticket that you get from your starter uh, moving on to our triggers we run 12 crit and four heal so like i said blitz 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 we're trying to kill him we don't care about draw triggers we don't care we barely care about heal triggers i almost wanted to go 16 crit but i'm not that crazy like you guys know me i'm not that crazy i'm i need my heals okay um and this deck also are, already has very low advantage and very low hand size so you definitely do want to run heals uh to keep yourself alive if but for like a turn more um because sometimes that could be the difference between you know winning and losing so um something that we got in this set for all three clans actually is we got like a new critical trigger type of sentinel we don't use them in alt mile um at least in my alt mile build and we don't use it in my build of chrono jet as well but this will be the first time that you guys are seeing it in my videos which is in the form of flower garden maiden Milas. so these are sentinel crits um brand new and they have 30 uh, 30k shield so this is supposed to combat the fact that for decks that don't have as much hand size it still gives you a very solid sentinel option to guard with um, I do still prefer PGs if we do have them, but because we want to run 12 crit and because, you know, it's a Sentinel that has 30k and we're not going to be able to run the draw trigger because it's a Sentinel, blah, 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 we're running 12 crit because of that. So, four Mylis, four Chestnut Bullet, two Night Queen Musketeer Daniel, two Spicy Fighter Capsian, and four Fairy Light Dragon. Like I said, in the Alt Mall um deck you have to run the g series heals or like are you even trying to heal like the cards have to respond to your will you know what i'm saying <laughs> but let's get right into our games here so the really entertaining games that i was talking about so we're playing against uh d please first uh d please goes for it first and proceeds to ride grand rope uh gets top five for a grade three and then discards sim buster we go for padmini do the same thing um except we discard ranunculus asha um and then we attack we get a crit which is an amazing start i'm always super happy when that happens because he's already in range to die you guys don't know this if you never played this deck or played against this deck but at two damage he's already in range to die like that's how real this is so we attack him with our grade two turn he does heal but like i said he's already in range to die so we don't even care um so he rides the grade three 
he plays a twin order in the back and then he plays a die jacker and grand rope looking top five for grade three uh discarding a sin buster that he gets and then he has a die Zorus as well he kind of boss one for blad black to give 10k to the front row and then he attacks us for 31 which we proceed to take he discards so that he can give a crit to vanguard which we proceed to two to pass because we're not trying to eat a three crit attack with a chance of him checking a crit he does not check anything in fact he checks the order so that like in you're in range and you can't escape ensures that i'm gonna go for my blitz turn especially with the way my hand is set up so i call um ridiculous asha i go force two i do a ridiculous asha skill to counter boss one call two tokens it gets 10k which is a good rear guard setup we go for dream spinning asha skill to create a asha flyer fairy token we play antero vanguard gets 15k we play antero vanguard gets 15k we play diane discard draw one vanguard gets 5k and we play diane discard one draw one vanguard gets 5k so we attack 428 and the reason being is that he either has to block this or um he takes it and he's definitely in range to die so we're attacking him with three crit right now and he no guards um even though he has a pg a lot of people might ask like why didn't he just pg the um the reason is if he pgs and i give that crit to all to vanguard still when this attacks it would be 68 with four critical um because i checked that crit because it, it like mirrors everything that the vanguard has so if that's the first time that you're seeing this deck in action that's how it works and we basically blitzed him um you need to choose very carefully when you blitz people because if you can blitz people at the wrong time you would definitely lose but i blitzed him in that case because he had low cards in hand i saw his drive checks and like it was just gonna be very hard for him to survive and then if he did survive he was gonna have like bare bones resources left um which is something that we can actually deal with so now we're playing against nubatama um nubatama player attacks us on grade one we attack on grade two again we check a crit so that good 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 start as you guys can see um, our opponent goes into Magatu Gale and then swings at us. We take a damage uh, just because we want it for Asha. Um, and now we ride Dream Spinning. Uh, we go into Ridiculous Fire Asha, uh, call it on the rear guard circle. We do the same combo. We get the Asha's Fire Fairy token. We do Antero, um, Farine, Farine, and then Antero. So all together, Vanguard gets a lot of power. We attack for 28. And then as soon as we attack for 28, our opponent actually left the game, which I typed here. And I said, like, basically LMAO. Um, I think that my opponent thought that they just wouldn't be able to guard it and that they were going to die anyways. Because they have a lot of 5k shields here, I'm seeing. 5k shield, 5k shield, 5k shield, 5k shield. Then they also have a 10k here, a 15k here, another 5, and another 10. And they also have a PG. So they could have PG'd one of the attacks. But if we check a crit, um, it would be, like, 68 to his 9k. So he needs, what, like, I think 50k shield to block that. And he does not have 50k raw shield in his hand. Um, let's see. 15, 25, 35, 45, 50. Okay, he has exactly enough raw shield to block. But then he would be left with like nothing. And we would literally just er eradicate him um, next turn. So that's what I mean when, when I hit him with that Neji Huga. You're in range. If you guys watch Naruto, definitely do. So you can understand the reference. <laughs> But our last and final game we're playing against Kagero. This is the most entertaining game of all because, as you guys know, um, if you guys have played Neonectar through the years, Neonectar has always had a terrible, god-awful matchup with Kagero. But now it's kind of okay. Um, I've always been that person that plays Neonectar anyways and powers through um, whatever Kagero has to try to make this good. So we actually start with three Sellas, which is like amazing against Kagero because they can't be retired by effects. So we do check the heal as well. Um, and we attack, we put him to three damage. So he's definitely in range now. Um, he rides a waterfall and thinks that he can retire our grade two, but ah, 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 um, our grade twos cannot be retired by effects. Um, so his waterfall just like poofs. Um, and then he proceeds to use this skill. Um, we take everything because we really don't care. He heals down, but like I said, he's still in range. He's still in my eight trigram 64 palms. So you're in range. And you can't escape. I, I rode uh, Ranunculus Asha. I let him know that he's in range. I played um, Asha Flower. Uh, the this Asha. I made a flower token. I played Antero. I play another Antero, and then I play Feline or Farine. I attack him for twenty-eight, um, and then he proceeds to guard. Uh, then we attack for fifty-three to Vanguard with three crit. Uh, we do check a crit and a heal and put it all to Vanguard. Um, rear guard attacks for his 73k for crit, and then he actually had double PG. So I was like, wow, like, you know, that's pretty godlike to just start off with double PG. So, you know, in typical Naruto fashion, 
we let the villain hit um, hit us with his best move, and then we pull out our ace card and we hit him with the eight trigrams, one hundred twenty-eight palms. You know what I'm saying? So we hit eight trigrams, one hundred twenty-eight palms. This time uh, we switch the turn switches back over to us. We make an Asha's Fire Fairy token again. We play a Fairine, and then we attack him for eighteen. Um, he asks how many crits the Vanguard is, and I say three crit. Um, so he double intercepts. He attacks for twenty three, and then he takes a gamble, knowing that if he cannot block or if he cannot survive this, um, he has a PG, but he would not be able to PG both columns. Um, so he no guards, and it's actually funny because I said eight trigrams dot 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 before I drove check, and then when I checked the crit, I was like sixty four palms. <laughs> So anyways, guys, I hope you guys have enjoyed the future fight for Asha. Definitely my favorite deck thus far of this set. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like I said before, be sure to subscribe and click the bell button so you don't have to miss any future content from us. Be sure to like the video if you like it and share the video if you love it. Be sure to comment down below letting me know your thoughts on the deck. And be sure to check out all the things that I mentioned at the very beginning of the um, video, being our social medias, our Twitch, our join button, and our second channel, Let's Plays Animes. But with that being said, this has been Josh from Cardfight Empire, and I'll see you guys on Monday for the new version Future Fights. Peace, guys.